Welcome back everyone. Over the past few videos, we have explored the file-based routing mechanism that SvelteKit offers. We have seen how to create a route for the root of our application, how to create nested routes, how to create dynamic routes, catch all routes, and also routes with optional parameters. But throughout the videos, we navigated to the different routes by entering the URL in the browser address bar, which of course is not how a regular user would navigate in our application. Typically, we have a UI element like a link, which the user can click to navigate to a different route, or the user can also be navigated to a different route programmatically after an action has completed. Let's learn how to do the same with SvelteKit. In this video, let's understand navigating to different routes using an element in the UI. For our first example, let's try to navigate from the home page to the slash blog page. Now you might be pleasantly surprised to know that SwellKit uses anchor elements to navigate between routes rather than a framework specific component. So in page.swelt file within the routes folder, add an anchor tag with text blog and href is equal to forward slash blog. If we now save the file and take a look at the browser, we should see the block text being rendered. This is a clickable element. When I click on it, we are navigated to slash blog. Our route navigation is successful. Let's do this one more time to make sure we get it right. For example two, let's navigate to the products page. So right after the first link, I'm going to add another. href is going to be slash products and the text is going to be products as well. If we now go back to the home page, we should see the products link. And when I click on this link, we are navigated to slash products as expected. It's also quite common to navigate back to the root of your application. So for example three, from this products page, let's add a link to go back to the home page. For that, in the products folder, open page.svelte and in the HTML, add an anchor tag and the href is going to be just a forward slash which represents the root of our application. The text is home. If we now go back to the browser, we should be able to see the newly added link to go home. Click on that and we are navigated back. Now for our fourth example, let's understand how to navigate to dynamic routes. In our products page, we are currently listing three products. Let's convert them into a link which takes the user to the corresponding details page. And if you remember, the details page route is slash products slash product ID, which can be one, two, three, and so on. Back in VS Code, in the same page.svelte file, Let's include a link in each of the heading tags. I'm going to duplicate this and change occurrences of one to two and three. If we now go back to the browser, all the products should be clickable. I click on product one and we are navigated to the details page. Go back, click on product two, and the same happens. We're able to successfully navigate to the dynamic route. Now, although this works fine, you might not always have the freedom to hard code a dynamic route like we see here. The product ID can be passed in as a prop to the component. We, of course, are not sending in the prop, but let's assume the prop does exist and assign a default value of 100 for use in our HTML. So at the top, script section, declare a prop, product ID, with a value of 100. We can then add another link element, but this time, href is going to be within curly braces, backtext, products, slash, product ID. 
we bind it to the text as well. If we now head back to the browser, we should see product 100, on click of which will take us to the details page for the same product. Our route navigation is working as expected. All right, in the next video, let's learn how to navigate programmatically to a given route in our application. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.